Hey everyone, welcome back to the dining room shop. So I was messing around with a super cheap record player this morning and I learned something new uh, when taking it apart uh, that sort of gave me an idea that I want to investigate here. Uh, briefly, it pertains to the, uh, the cartridge, the part with the actual needle on it. This here is the head and cartridge from my actual decent record player I have, a Technic model from the early 70s. This is an AT cartridge, uh, but this is the only, as far as my knowledge of how record players work went, this is the only type of cartridge I was ever familiar with it, or you know, this is how I assume they all work. It's the kind where the needle, of course, has two moving magnets on it. Those little cylindrical posts you see sticking out there are magnets, and they move in you know, in and out of these coils on the inside of the head. An electromagnetic pickup. It makes sense, you know. The needle moves, you know, in this direction for one channel, this direction for the other channel, and that generates a voltage in the coil. So that's kind of how I thought they all work. Turns out that's not the case. Uh, this is a relatively decent cartridge. Um, I don't remember what I paid for it, but it wasn't, it wasn't nothing. Uh, but this cartridge here, and it's already partially taken apart, this came out of a turntable where the the whole record player uh, was like 25 bucks. So this is the opposite, dirt cheap. Uh, and I took it apart expecting to see sort of the same thing, but I did not. And this is what I found. So this is sort of an interesting uh, arrangement here. Turns out these are quite common. Uh, and they've been around for a long time. I just didn't know they existed. This is a piezoelectric uh, record player pickup. So if I pull the actual needle off, you'll notice that has nothing on it at all. It's just the arm with the needle on the tip, uh, and then there's a rubber just pivot, which allows this thing to, to flex and deflect. That arm sits in, and we can take this apart even further for clarity. That arm sits in this little cradle here on the end. This is a little rubber piece. And instead of coils or magnets, we have two piezoelectric uh, pickups. So what I'm assuming is these are in sort of a bimorph configuration where uh, when you bend the beam, uh, it generates a voltage or if you apply it a voltage, uh, which is what we'll get into in a sec, it would it would tend to bend the beam. It looks like there's two, and I don't know if this is going to be visible at all. Not really. But it looks like there's two discrete layers separated by something uh, in the middle. It's not just one homogeneous crystal in between the two electrodes on either side. So I'm guessing like maybe one, one side of the crystal expands, one side contracts, like they're oriented differently, and that would cause the beam to bend. So this is pretty cool. I mean, it makes it makes a lot of sense um, that this would be a simple way to to build a, a record player pickup. But immediately I thought, ooh, this would be kind of interesting if we used it in the reverse configuration. So I've definitely thought of the idea of of back driving uh, uh, phonograph cartridges in the past as some sort of you know extremely high resolution actuator or some sort of little uh, micro-manipulator thing. Uh, the thing is, with an electromagnetic pickup like this, uh, this doesn't work super great. Uh, we have no feedback, right? It's just you're, you, you'd, you're, you'd apply a voltage, and yeah, in theory, it would deflect the magnet some. Uh, but electromagnetic actuators, uh, generally, when driven in an open loop, uh, they have zero stiffness, right? They just generate a force. Um, so long as the geometry of the situation doesn't change very much. So an open loop electromagnetic, you know, actuator like this, this is kind of, kind of not very useful for like any sort of decent positioning. Piezos, piezos on the other hand, are, are mildly more uh, intriguing in, in this regard. An open loop piezo may have some nonlinearity and hysteresis to its motion, but stiffness wise, they're, they're much much, much better. You know, if you apply a voltage to this, uh, the thing will deflect. And this is a solid, solid object. It's not just generating some uh, magnetic field 
uh, that's applying a force somewhere. Uh, they, they do have some finite stiffness uh, in, in open loop. Um, so th that's why piezos, uh, at least in open loop, you see them more used in uh, you know, nanometer level displacement uh, transducers and these sorts of things. And in this particular configuration, you can, you can actually realize you know, more than just well, a 1D motion. You have two of these cantilevered arms uh, at 90 degrees to each other. And so imagine now, with this back together, if you were to drive this in reverse, if you apply the same voltage to both of the, uh, the piezos and sort of drove them in sync, the needle would just move up and down, right? You would have a motion in, we'll say, the y-axis. But if you drove them out of phase with each other, with the opposite signs, the opposite sign uh, on, you know, the other uh, piezo crystal, you translate side to side. At least for small displacements, that would be that would be true. Um, small angle approximation, right? Uh, so if you you can, depending on you know how in sync or out of sync you drive them, you could basically have a two axis uh, piezo stage here. And just the configuration that it's already in, where my mind goes with this is a, uh, you know, some sort of scanning probe microscopy technique, like a scanning tunneling microscope or something like this. You know, of course, I say this is better stiffness than on, uh, like a Lorentz force actuator, but this is still, I mean, this is rubber. Like you'd want to replace this and it's a pretty squishy system overall. So you couldn't do any like real work with this, but if you're just moving something for a precision instrument or metrology application, uh, it could be could be useful. Um, what I'd like to do, and this is all just me speculating and having ideas based off this, uh, this interesting arrangement here. I'm gonna see if I can get this set up uh, and actually measure, if we back drive this, what sort of uh, displacements we can realize. Uh, I don't have a piezo driver that is necessarily well suited for this, uh, but what I do have is my uh, Analog Discovery 3, which can double as a signal generator. Now, I can't use that to back drive this, because this is a an actual coil in here of a you know relatively low resistance. This is a 500 ohm coil in this, uh, and it's not, but the signal generator is not meant to drive a, a relatively low impedance load like that. But you can absolutely drive a piezo uh, because the resistance is so high and the impedance is so high uh, between the electrodes here. We can just drive that directly. So I can get that set up. And while we can't put massive amounts of voltage on it, uh, we can see if we can measure at least some displacement with the plus or minus five volts uh, that the analog discovery produces. So let's see if we can do that. Okay, so here's this ridiculous measuring setup I put together here for seeing what kind of displacements the uh, piezo bars can produce. I've got one of the bars held in this miniature vise clamped between two screws which are acting as the contacts. The bottom screws insulated uh, from the vise to prevent it from shorting and that's where the uh, positive lead from the signal generator connects. And the other negative lead just uh, is grounded basically to the uh, to the vice body. Got the uh, Starrett electronic indicator looking at the top of the bar here. It is indicating on that uh, rubber uh, piece, so that's going to introduce some error just from that being pretty squishy, but I don't really care uh, too much about that since the displacements I'm trying to measure are so small. Uh, the error that's going to introduce from the force changing and the Hertzian contact uh, stresses and hence deflection changing, I think will also be small. And this is not a calibration, I just want to get an idea of how much it's moving. So I'm driving that currently with a sine wave, maxing out the amplitude of this uh, analog discovery uh, 3, plus or minus uh, 5 volts, 10 volts peak to peak. And looking at the readout on the indicator here, so we're on the finest scale. And we're getting pretty much plus or minus 
uh, 20 millionths, just over 20 millionths of an inch, inch, inch or so, or just over a micron of total displacement uh, for a 10 volt input signal. <clears throat> so pretty, pretty respectable. And you can imagine if you drove this with an actual piezo driver, you could get much more, uh, much larger displacements if you're giving it maybe 100 volts or something like this. Um, but its ability to make small displacements is, is also quite impressive. So I'll turn down the amplitude here to 100 millivolts uh, peak to peak, or plus or minus 100 millivolts, sorry, on that driving wave. And now if we look, and I'll have to uh, turn up the frequency a bit here so it's more visible. Go to two hertz. It's subtle, but that is certainly moving. And my hands are honestly probably too shaky to even catch this. I can see it. So that's five micro inches per division. I'd call that about a micro inch of displacement there. Uh, just reading between the lines. Uh, and that's, you know, 200 millivolts peak to peak uh, signal we're driving it with. So it's totally, totally believable that you could take this down to a nanometer or even atomic resolution uh, pretty easily. So, you know, with those, uh, with modifications to get rid of all the rubber stuff and make this a bit stiffer and have some sort of probe on the end, I don't know, you probably could uh, do some, some cool nanometer level... Uh, like scanning probe microscopy of some some kind uh, with this might be a cool a uh, cool project to try it's a two axis uh, nano positioning probe or maybe even some sort of manipulator so yeah just playing around with that thanks for watching